guys, what's going on? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling. Much appreciated you guys making a little time to check today's video out. Just still driving back from Lake Hartwell. And man, you, you guys see the sky there? This is just getting unbelievable. It, I swear, we have not had a cloud in the sky in Missouri for over a month. I'm not talking about just like, just being partly cloudy. I'm talking about like it is right there not a cloud in the sky it is bone dry it is i haven't seen a cloud in a month in missouri it's just it's the weirdest deal i've ever seen so uh i don't know what's going on with that but it's really a good time to have some good sunglasses like i said i got my rb2 signature series solar bats on here if you guys are interested in uh, getting a pair of them i'll include the link in the description always helps out to keep from being just all the glare with that bright bright lights out there Anyway, today, guys, I'm going to give you guys some of my thoughts on big glide baits, what I learned about them from Lake Hartwell, <clears throat> and been fishing them for a few years. Might It might give you guys some good uh, foundational information about when to throw them, when to put them down, because I've learned the hard way on a lot of this. And, you know, I don't claim to be a glide bait expert like Oliver and I. I mean, Oliver and I is the undisputed glide bait expert in the United States. So you guys can check his videos out at his uh, YouTube channel, Big Bass Dreams. He's, he's, the, there's nobody better than Oliver with that. Um, and I've had conversations with Oliver, you know, trying to learn about it, but it's something that, it's fascinating technique simply because of the size the fish it produces. So anyway, here's what I've learned about the big glide baits. And when we're talking about big glide baits, I'm talking about, you know, baits, bigger than six inches long six to nine inches is the standard length or size for what you know, we consider big glide baits so a couple different things is there's first of all if you're going to catch fish on these things you got to commit to it it's not this isn't a bait that you can pick up for 30 minutes and fish it and determine if they're going to bite it you just got to put it in your hand and not take it out sort of like what i did yesterday at hartwell the second with that, I found that the, there are some things you can do as far as like, you know, tweaking colors and retrieves and that type of stuff. But ultimately, what I have found out about big jerkbait fish or big glide bait fishing is that there are three types of bass that react to big glide baits. And so I'm, I'm going to get into that here in a second. First of all, I think just setting this up, this is sort of what you need. You got to have water clarity is sort of in that anywhere between three to five foot range I think is best um, you you've got to have a population of some quality fish in the lake <clears throat> if you've got a lake that's just full of little fish it's not going to work that good um, and I think that you need some type of wind I mean the sky conditions aren't aren't as important <clears throat> in my opinion as the wind I think you need a the you know ideally like a 10 to 20 mile an hour wind with that that's what that would make the ideal conditions for it. but anyway back to the three personalities of the fish <clears throat> there's three different types of fish as far as their moods <clears throat> and how they react <clears throat> sorry i still got this, this sinus allergy stuff i'm getting over there's three different moods and personalities of fish that react to live baits the first one is the, the the what i just call like the annihilators they're the ones that when you're fishing this thing that they come out of nowhere and just absolutely just wreck the bait i mean they hit it so vicious that it's that's what it that's what makes you want to keep throwing it and those are few and far between they don't they don't come like that but if there are some bass out there that, that when you bring a big glide bait line they'll just try to absolutely demolish it the second personality of fish that you have on there are the ones that you can trick into biting <clears throat> through manipulation. Now these are the ones that you normally, for example, you see the bass following the lure and you can do something with, with your speed of retrieve to, to trigger that fish to hit it. They're interested in it, but they are, they're not going to bite it if you continue reeling it the same way that you're doing. Now it can be slowing it down, it could be speeding it up, it could be doing a figure eight with it, it could be jerking it, whatever like that. Sometimes you can trick those bass into eating those, that jerk bait or that glide bait just by your retrieve. Normally what happens if they bite it like that, you're barely gonna have them hooked because they're sort of hesitant. And the third category of fish 
is the most common by far in glide bait fishing are the ones that just follow it and never hit it. And there's nothing you can do to get them to bite it. I'm gonna guess in my experience, if I have, um, and just like what happened to Hartwell, I had probably 15 bass follow it and I had you know, one, one fish bite it actually. I think you have probably 80% of the bass out there that well, may, maybe 90. Let's go. I'll, I'll, I'll even push it to 90. I think 90% of the bass, if you get, if you have uh, throw the bait all day long, 90% of the bass that you see will follow the glide bait and not bite it, and there's nothing you can do about it. 5% of them will totally annihilate it, and 5% of them you can trick them into into biting it. So here's here's the sort of like the the dilemma when you're fishing big glide baits is you've got to know when to put it down because just like yesterday at Hartwell, you know, I had these three and five pounders that were following this thing and there's, there, there's nothing I could do to get them to bite. I, they wouldn't react to any type of speed or retrieve movements. They wouldn't react on a follow-up bait that you throw back in or like a Senko or a wacky rig or something like that. They were just interested in it. The bait was getting their attention. They had no intention of biting it. So when you get bass that are in that type of mood, I think, guys, you have to put it down because they're, otherwise you're going to wind up like I do, did and catch one fish. And it's hard to do because when you see these big ones that are chasing the thing, you, you keep thinking, it's like, okay, I'm going to get one that one of these are going to eat the thing. Or maybe there's something I can do to trick this fish into biting. And that's what burns the big glide bait fishermen. I have heard, I hear it as much as I hear guy saying if it wasn't for live scope I wasn't this tournament. I hear the same thing with glide bait fishermen saying you can't believe all the big ones I saw follow the sin and wouldn't hit it. <laughs> that is just typical with big glide baits and I know pros out there that have just completely got rid of all their glide baits simply because they don't want to get sucked in to what I experienced yesterday. So a couple different things with that is, you know, I'm not telling you guys not to fish them because they're fun to fish. I mean, you, they, you, they look like they're going to get eight every single cast. I love fishing them. I like watching the bait. I like watching the fish react to them. But I think they're a pretty poor choice for tournaments overall. Now, <clears throat> there's going to be windows when you catch them on it and you can win on it. But for the most part, guys, if you throw a big glide bait in a tournament, you are going to be moaning and groaning at the end of the day that, that uh, you know, why didn't they bite it? So that's what I've learned about it like I said there's there are some things that you know you can increase your odds by there's so many different glide baits out there on the market and you know getting the right action and the right colors and all that type of stuff can help you ultimately though the thing you got to remember about it it's all about the mood and personality of the fish if those buy if those bass aren't in the mood to eat that thing you're never that doesn't matter what you do you're not going to get them to eat it so Hope that helps you guys out. If you haven't fished glide baits or if you fish them, uh, that's sort of what's been my experience with them. So I just wanted to pass that along. So hope you guys are doing good. I'll check in later. See you.